In this presentation, we are going to take a look at the new gadget that has been created to add even more variety when creating textures. First, we're going to start off with a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing today. So the first thing that we're going to discuss is what exactly is the texture toolbox and how can it benefit me when creating textures. Then we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the new gadget and then we're going to go ahead and just give a quick summary of what we've been discussing today. So all the textures that you can see on the right hand side here have all been created using the exact same uh, wave vectors that were created using the vector texture tool. And all we do is simply change a few parameters within the texture toolbox and we can end up with a different variation of texture. So let's take a look at what is the texture toolbox. So the current methods involve using a 2D profile toolpath, for instance, which is where we cut down to a specific depth. So as you can see, if you imagine that we've cut our texture and we're looking down the x-axis now of our texture, you'll see that if you look at the image on the right-hand side, you'll see that each line has been cut to a specific depth. So that would be our 2D profile in toolpath. Then we've got the option to use the texture toolpath as well, which is where each line is cut at a different depth. So as you can see on the image on the right, each uh, cut has gone in at a different depth. It gives us a 2.5D texture. So with the texture toolbox, the idea was to add the ability to cut different depths along a single vector. So you can kind of get like a wave effect that goes up and down throughout the whole vector. To accomplish this, the gadget has the ability to define a minimum and maximum change rate. Now this is how often the tool will cut in and out of the material along a single vector. And with that, we also can specify our minimum and maximum cut depth, so where we want to cut from and to during one of the changes uh, across the vector. So as you can see on the top right image here, uh, that's using the same minimum and maximum change rate with an altering minimum and maximum depth, which is why we get that wave effect across the entire texture. The image underneath that is where we use a different minimum and maximum change rate uh, with altering cut depths as well. So that's why you can see that each one of the vectors, uh, they start to cut into each other as they're going across the entire length of the texture panel. And then we went ahead and added even more features to add more variety to our texturing toolpaths. So we added the ability to change cut direction. Now this is where, first of all, if we cut in the same direction, so that's where the tool is going to cut each vector from left to right or right to left. Then we have the ability to choose alternating direction. So the tool will cut one vector from left to right, then the one underneath it will cut from right to left and vice versa. Then we also have random, so the uh, software itself will choose whichever direction it's going to cut the next line or we can alternate until every, which is where we alternate the cut direction until we get to a certain number which we define within the gadget itself. Then the last option that we have within the texturing toolbox is the ability to rotate contours. Now we can only rotate them at 180 degrees, but you get to choose uh, how often we get to rotate the next vector. So it may be every other one, so we would choose to rotate every second vector in the queue, or we could choose to uh, rotate one contour 180 degrees every four vectors that it comes across. So you'll see that if you look at the images on the right hand side, the top right uh, picture is where we use the same uh, change rate, but it's going to be an odd number. So if we use an odd number as the change rate, if we alternate the cut direction, you'll see that they then start to cut into each other as they pass from left to right and right to left. Uh, the picture underneath is where we use the same change rate and the same cut depths and then just rotate it every other vector. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the texture toolbox within the software. So we're going to go ahead and demo the different tools. So we're going to demo the change rate, different cut depths, the cut direction, the ability to rotate uh, the contours 180 degrees, and then we're also going to show you how to save and load any settings within the software as well. So just a demonstration note, so just for your viewing pleasure, all material that we're going to set up for our jobs is going to be uh, at a width of 48 inches and a height of 24 inches. This is just so that you can see the textures more clearly uh, using the preview toolpath form. However, all textures that you can see in this demonstration can all be created using large material. So let's open a new copy of Aspire and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file. So I'm going to create this with a width of 48 inches and 24 inches high. I'm going to create the thickness to be 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to use the 
lower left as the XY datum position and then I'm just going to go ahead and press OK on that job setup. So first of all I'm just going to go ahead and create some basic vectors for us to use. So I'm going to go to the create vector texture tool. It's going to go ahead and just specify some settings here. So I'm going to have an angle of 0 degrees. Uh, I'm going to have a spacing of half an inch. I'm going to have an amplitude of also half an inch and I'm going to choose a length of 3. I'm going to have no noise, no variation and I'm just going to preview those as you can see here on the work area. So I'm just going to press OK as I'm happy with those and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight those and go to gadgets and select the texture toolbox like so. So just to give you a quick overview of the texture toolbox, the first options that we come to uh, are the, the change rate. So you've got the minimum change rate on here and then the maximum change rate there. Then you've got the ability to add the minimum cut depth and maximum cut depth here. Underneath that we've also got then the ability to change the cut direction. So we've got normal which is going to be all going the same way, so from either left to right or right to left. Then we've got this button here which is to alternate them, so they're going to go to left, right, right, left. Then we can randomize the cut direction and then we've got this option here is where we can alternate until we get to this specified number here. And then the last option that we come to is the ability to rotate our contour 180 degrees. So if we just choose normal, they're going to be exactly as we've highlighted them here. So as you can see, they're going to be exactly in that form. Or we can rotate every other uh, vector. So whatever number we specify in this box here is going to be how long it's going to be before uh, we rotate a vector 180 degrees. So at the moment with the option 2, we would be rotating every other one. And then once we've specified our parameters for our toolpath, we can then go ahead and select our tool. So this will just bring up the tool database that you're all familiar with. You'd go ahead and select your tool, so maybe you'd want a V-bit of an inch, uh, 90 degrees. And you can also then give your toolpath a name. Now this will obviously uh, be what it's called within your toolpath list when you go to the toolpaths tab. We do then also have then the ability to load and save our settings. So if I wanted to load some settings that I previously liked, I'd simply hit the load but settings button and it would take me to my save settings folder within the texture toolbox gadget itself. And then we can just go ahead and just select one of those and press open. You'll see that all then the parameters will change to exactly what uh, I specified in that uh, settings file. And the save settings works in exactly the same way. So if, so if I like a group of settings, so I can go ahead and run this gadget. Uh, if I preview the toolpath and decide that I actually like those settings, I can come back into the texture toolbox. Because the texture toolbox remembers all the parameters that was used last, you can go ahead and save that uh, for next time. OK, so now you've had an overview of the texture toolbox, let's start by demonstrating the change rate feature. So I'm just going to change the minimum change rate to 30, and I'm also going to change the maximum change rate to 30. And I'm just going to alternate the minimum and maximum cut depth. So I'm just going to change the minimum to 0.2 of an inch, and then the maximum is going to be down to half an inch. Then we can go ahead and just choose normal cut direction, normal uh, so I don't want to rotate any of the contours, select my tool, so I'm just going to use a 1 inch V-bit of 90 degrees, click OK on that, and we can go ahead and just change the name, so I can just call this change rate 30, like so, and then I can just press OK and that will then create me my toolpath, like so. So all I need to do is go over to the toolpath tab and you'll see that my toolpath is listed under the toolpath list. So all I need to do now is simply go to the preview toolpass form and then we can go ahead and see what this has created us. So I'm just going to go ahead and preview that and you'll see that this is what we get. So this is going to be demonstrating the original wave effect. So as you can see if I just zoom in you see that across the whole width of the panel we should get this nice wave that goes up and down in, across the entire vector like so. So that's the type of texture that we'll get if we use the same change rate. Now what do we get if we alternate that change rate? So let's just make sure our vectors are still selected, as otherwise we will throw up an error. And then we go to gadgets and then select the texture toolbox, and then what we do is just going to change that minimum uh, and maximum change rates. So I'm just going to change this minimum change rate to 15, 
and then the maximum change rate to 25. I'm going to keep the rest of the settings the same, apart from it's going to change the name and it's going to change this change rate alternate like so and then press OK and you'll see that thing created me my second toolpath. So if I just go to the 3D view and just reset my toolpath and then preview our new one, you'll see that we've created a new variant of our toolpath. If I just zoom in a little bit, you'll see that because we've got an alternating change rate across all of the different vectors, you'll see that each one is now kind of cutting into each other like so. So the next feature I'm going to demonstrate is the cut direction uh, alternating from left to right and right to left. So let's go back to the 2D view and just make sure our vectors are still selected and then go to gadgets and then open the text toolbox again. Now you'll see that all my settings have actually still uh, been stored from the previous one. So if I did really like a texture that I'd created, I can just go ahead and then save that and then call that uh, change rate alternate and just put 15, 25, just so it gives me an idea of what this actually is and just press save. And then I can just go ahead and load that anytime in the future, like so. So to demonstrate the alternating cut direction, I'm just going to change the minimum and maximum change rate to be the same. So I'm going to keep the minimum as 15 and the maximum I'm also going to put as 15. I'm going to change the minimum cut depth to 0 and the maximum cut depth to just under the radius of the tool, which is going to be 0.4, like so. And then I'm going to choose the cut direction as alternate, like so as well. Just make sure my tool is selected, my V-bit 1 inch of 90 degrees, and then we can just go ahead and just call this cut direction alternate, like so, and then just run that gadget. And you'll see that then uh, we've got our third toolpath from the gadget. And you'll see on the actual uh, vectors in the job, you'll see that they go from left to right and right to left, as you can see uh, by the arrows on the vectors. So if we just go to the 3D view and reset the preview and then now preview our new toolpath, you'll see that we get this real nice effect from alternating the cut direction. Now by using an odd minimum and maximum change rate, that forces the vectors to cut into each other when they pass from left to right and then right to left, which then gives you this really nice effect, like so. And by using uh, the minimum cut depth as zero and the maximum cut depth as just under the radius of the tool, you'll always seem to get this nice effect which has been left from the actual top surface of the material. So next I'm going to demonstrate the alternate until every unspecified number. So let's just make sure our vectors are still selected, like so, and they are. And let's go to gadgets and then texture toolbox, and then we can go ahead and specify the settings for this one. So I'm going to keep the same minimum and maximum change rate. I'm just going to change the depth to 0.2 and 0.5, so back to as they were. And then I'm just going to change this to alternate every and I'm, and I'm going to alternate every third vector like so. So I'm just going to change this to alternate until every four and then press OK to run that like so. And I'm just going to go back to the 3D view, reset my preview and then preview this new toolpath like so. So what you should see here is that it should be alternating the cut direction of every vector until the fourth one and then we'll get one that's replicated as whatever the last line was cut as. Like so. So the last feature that I'm going to demonstrate uh, out of all the settings that we've got in the text toolbox is the rotate contour 180 degrees. So again, just make sure our vectors are selected, go to gadgets and then texture toolbox. Now for this, it doesn't really matter what change rate I use, as I'm going to be using the same minimum and maximum cut depth, so that means it's not ever going to change the depth along the vector. It's just going to be a constant half an inch cut depth. And we can just choose this uh, cut direction as normal, and just rotate every, so select that option, and we can rotate every, I'm going to just put every second vector, like so. Make sure the tool's selected, and then it's going to put 
rotate 180 every two as my toolpath name. And then just press OK to run the gadget and you'll see that we should then have created ourselves a new toolpath. So let's go back to the 3D view, let's just reset our preview. Now you can see from the actual preview of the toolpath, you can see that the, the vectors have been rotated already. So let's just go ahead and preview what this actually looks like. And you'll see that we can get this really nice effect from uh, alternating every other vector, like so. So that demonstrates all the different tools within the text toolbox. Now we can go ahead and actually mix all these options together to create something completely unique. You just simply need to go ahead, create some vectors with the vector, vector texture tool, select your vectors and simply play around with the different options within the texture toolbox. Now as a final demonstration, I'm just going to quickly create a new job. So I'm just going to file and close this one. And I'm going to create one that is larger than 48 by 24. So I'm just going to use, like I say, a full sheet of material. So 96 by 48, same thickness, same XY data position, and just select OK. Create myself some new uh, vector texture waves. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose an angle of 0 degrees, a spacing of half an inch. I'm going to use an amplitude of 24 inches and a wavelength of 48 no variation, no noise, and just click preview, like so. And what I'm going to demonstrate here is like what, I, what I've called a shine effect, which I just noticed whilst playing around with different uh, settings within the texture toolbox. So I'm just going to select my vectors and open the texture toolbox. I'm just going to go to load settings, then I'm going to select this option here to have the shine effect, and just press open. Now you'll notice it's even loaded in the toolpath name for me called shine effect. And all I'm going to do is press OK to create my toolpath, like so. And go to the Toolpath tab and just quickly preview this for you. And you'll see that you get this nice uh, shine effect across the actual vectors. Now the reason we've got this effect is because we're using the same uh, change rate for the longer vectors as well as these smaller vectors that just fill these areas here. So to summarize the texture toolbox, the texture toolbox adds new variations to creating textures. So we are able to alter the depth along a vector. We can also alternate the cut direction and we can also rotate the contours. The only thing for me to say to you is go ahead and experiment with all the different options within the texture toolbox. There are thousands of different variations we can create with this texture toolbox gadget alone.